G'day and welcome back to the Smoky Pastures Barbecue YouTube channel. Today we are cooking pulled pork, but we're doing it with a little bit of a difference. So generally pulled pork is pork shoulder or pork butt or the, or the shoulder collar muscle that's cooked until it's basically pull apart tender. You can shred it with your knife and fork or even cut it with a spoon. So uh, one of the problems though with pulled pork I tend to find is the texture is great no matter what you cook it in, whether it's in a crock pot, casserole dish, smoker, or even in the oven. Uh, the texture is always great, but sometimes the flavor is really lacking. So today we're gonna cook it in our Weber kettle. We're gonna smoke it, so we're adding flavor in three different ways. So the first little secret weapon, we've got some clarified butter or ghee. Okay, so ghee is clarified butter, so it's butter that's been cooked the uh, milk solids have been separated away and what's left is the butter fat. Uh, the reason why we like to use this is uh, when, even if uh, we just warm it up slightly, it goes liquid. Um, it's also been cooked a little bit longer, so it's got a little bit of a nuttier and uh, more developed flavor than just uh, melted butter. Uh, and then we're gonna get this and inject it into our pork shoulder today. So we're gonna add a little bit more fat, a lot more flavor, and we're gonna use that injection also to add some of our favorite barbecue rub straight into the middle of that meat uh, to further intensify the flavor. So we're not just putting the barbecue rub on the outside, but it's going on the inside of the meat as well. And then the other third, but very important component is we're adding some smoke flavor. So we're using some peach smoke wood here from Natural Smoke uh, Barbecue Woods. Uh, along with our charcoal briquettes. Uh, the charcoal briquettes are going to provide the fuel source for the cook and the heat, and our smoking wood is gonna supply the smoky flavor, and the wood uh, type is peach today. That's gonna give us a nice color, but it pairs really well with pork. It's a really light, not too intense, but really good flavor. So anyway, we'll get to making our uh, butter injection and uh, we'll go from there, cheers. Okay guys, so we're inside now, sorry about that noise. So we've got about 200 uh, mils of the ghee in this saucepan right now. We've got our barbecue rub, just going to add a couple of tablespoons of the rub. Now we don't want to add too much because the problem is, is often with a lot of these barbecue injectors, just excuse the noise for a sec. is if we make that solution too thick, it's really just not gonna go through the nozzle of the injector very well. So we don't really wanna get this to a boil or anything like that. I just wanna get it to a nice warmed temperature. Um, as soon as it hits the pork meat, because the pork meat's been in the fridge, it's gonna um, pretty much solidify again straight away. So we just want it a little bit warmer so it stays a liquid when we uh, Suck it up with our injector and we'll go from there. So those bubbles are starting to tell me that maybe it's starting to get a little bit warm. So I'm just gonna back the heat off and stir it for a little bit longer, just try and dissolve that uh, that rub a little bit more in there. And then uh, I'll show you the injection process. All right guys, we've got our pork scotch here, which is part of the pork butt. Uh, we've got our injection liquid, got our injector here. Just gonna draw some of that liquid in nice and slowly, not too quick and not too much at once. Just draw it all up in there into this syringe. And then a little bit at a time, we're just gonna make a little bit of a hole into that pork scotch and we're just going to push and you can see the meat just puff up there a little bit as we inject the liquid. A little bit might spurt out like that, just did this then but that's okay, that's fine. As long as we're getting the majority of it in there. And then we'll just go in a little bit further along into the muscle. You can usually feel if you've found a bit of a cavity in there and uh, you can definitely see uh, when it's starting to pump up. When it's quite easy to push the syringe in is usually when you're in one of those sort of seams any of this butter coming in onto the outside is fine. We're gonna probably uh, give this a little bit of a coating with a little bit of mustard. 
and uh, that's just going to help our rub stick. So a little bit of this clarified butter on the outside isn't going to be too much of a problem. So just trying to get this throughout as much of the meat as possible. And add a whole lot of flavour to the meat. Just trying to be even, space it out. Like I said, it doesn't really matter too much if a bit leaks out. It's all fine. I mean, once again, we're just trying to add flavour. Pork, pork like this already has a fair bit of fat in it. Uh, a lot of the time we're injecting meats that don't have all that much intramuscular fat just to add some fat into the protein. So the fat in this butter is really just contributing extra flavour and then being a way that we can get some rub onto the inside of the meat. So I'm just going back around some areas where it looks like I haven't injected too much into yet and just finishing off with a little bit more. So that'll probably do pretty much out of liquid now. So I'm going to give this a bit of a, a rub with some mustard and then some more of our rub on the outside and then go from there. Okay, got some nice peach smoke coming out there coming up to temp got our meat all rubbed so I'm just gonna pop this in now and then just let that temp stabilize at around 250 Fahrenheit and uh, we're just gonna smoke this pretty much non-stop for about four hours and then we'll uh, wrap it and just a quick shot of the smoker setup so we've got pit probe here meat here we've got our Olive Pipco briquettes forming our snake. We've got some lit ones here. Our peach wood burning away, giving us that nice smoke. And the way I've set this uh, this kettle up here, you can see the snake's a pretty long one. It's going nearly all the way around on itself. Uh, we should get a good eight, nine hours, which is more than enough for this cook. So I'm just gonna keep moving the grate around to keep the, um, the meat as far away from the uh, heat source as possible. But yeah, we'll check in, in in a few hours time. Okay, so this cook's going a little bit longer than expected. Um, we've been going for about five hours now. Hit that 150 mark, uh, finally internal in the pork. Let's have a little quick look at it. Bark on that is really awesome. And uh, what we're gonna do is wrap it now. Really happy with that. Uh, and then we're gonna wrap it and pretty much just include a little bit of honey for a little bit of liquid in the wrap um, and then just another little trick that I like to do um, I like to then put the wrapped meat into a foil tray so there we are in the tray in the foil wrap now the uh, the tray just helps if I'm a little bit careless uh, or if we have a little bit of a leak where I've got the probe in there and all those juices start to come out uh, especially when taking it in and out of the Weber. We really want to keep all those juices. They're going to add so much flavor, especially since we've just add, added that honey, and it's going to keep our uh, pork nice and moist. So snake's still going strong. Oh, still got hours left in that. So anyway, I'll uh, show you what it's like when we pull it off. Okay, folks, it's been another few hours here. Just going to have a bit of a moment of truth. The uh, thermometer is reading about a 201 internal temperature. So we're just going to check this with a little probe test with our uh, instant read thermometer. Just taking off the foil here. Ooh. It looks pretty hot. Probe is very tender right there. A little bit less so there. Yep, that's good. 
All right, so let's take this off and we're just going to let it rest uh, for about half an hour and then we'll give it a pull. Okay, so it's been about half an hour. We've been resting the bull pork here. Um, I've taken it out of the wrap, put it into the uh, full tray, poured all the juices in there, and we've just let it sit there and soak. So now, we take all this uh, full wrap off. And then we can have a good look at the pork there. So what I'm going to do is it's pretty hot. So I'm just going to take a little piece of that bark off there, show you there. Then I'm going to get my couple of forks and then just demonstrate how soft and tender that is. Let's Put a fork in the middle and twist and then you can see steam's coming off there <laughs> it's obviously still pretty hot let's do a little taste test so when we started this whole experiment we wanted to look at how we could get a little bit more taste in our pulled pork without relying on the sauce so we injected it injected it with butter and the rub so let's let's give it a little taste. It's going to be pretty hot, but I'm willing to give it a go. Mmm. You can taste that smoke flavour. It's absolutely magic. And uh, just give it a little bit of a rub in those juices. Mmm. Oh yeah. Saltiness from the rub sweetness from that honey that we put in there so you know i could just <laughs> probably sit here and eat this all night but mm. and that's just got so much flavor before you even put any sauce on it so i'm going to pull the rest of this most of it's going to actually be used um, in the next couple of days for a few different recipes. Pulled pork's actually one of those low and slow proteins that I actually think reheats really well. So we're going to make some nachos. I'm going to do a couple of other different recipes with it uh, in over the weekend in our isolation. And uh, have a little bit of fun with this. But right off the bat, I would have loved to have had this cooked at a reasonable time for a good crowd of people um, pulled this up right here and served it in nothing but its own juices because all that butter all that rub and the honey um, it's come out tasting absolutely spectacular so uh, I think we'll add a little bit more to this video show you a little bit about what we've done with the nachos tomorrow night but otherwise um, yeah thanks for watching Cheers. Okay folks, so it's the next day. Just a little quick squiz. I pulled my pork, covered it up all nicely, and that's how it is in the fridge. So you have a look at it here. It looks like it has dried out, but if you actually look underneath the bottom of all that pork, there is all the nice juices and the congealed fat and everything from that all retained in that foil tray. So it's pretty easy to heat up. Just scoop out as much as you want, but make sure you get some of that stuff from the bottom. Uh, put it in another foil tray, or even if you want to heat this whole lot up, just cover it up again with uh, aluminium foil. Put it in the oven. I usually like to set the oven to about oh, 150 degrees, and then give it about 20 minutes, half an hour, and then uh, give all the juices and the pork a good mix through again, and off you go. So... Give you a little uh, show, shot of the nachos that we're making for dinner tonight later. All right, so we reheated our pork, assembled our skillet nacho bowl, and she's gonna go into the kettle out. Just gonna set that uh, timer for about 10 minutes, and then I'm gonna come back and turn it so it cooks evenly on both sides, but I reckon about, about 20 minutes, and that's gonna be pretty ripper. 
And there we go, folks. Skillet nachos, all garnished up. Bit of sriracha mayo, crumbled a bit of bacon over the top in the end. But uh, yeah, that's what you can do with leftover pulled pork. Delicioso. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Love to uh, put out some more of these videos for you. Cheers.